Have you ever noticed water droplets forming on grass in the morning or condensation on a cold drink on a hot day? These are everyday examples of the dew point in action. Whether it's keeping your home comfortable, preventing condensation in HVAC systems, understanding the dew point helps us manage moisture in the air. Do you know when it's important that an HVAC system reaches the dew point and when it is to be avoided? In this video, we'll dive into the science behind dew point temperature, how it affects our surroundings, and why it plays a critical role in everyday applications like air conditioning and building design. Water droplets on grass. In the early morning, we often see droplets of water on grass. This is called dew, and it forms when the air cools to its dew point temperature. At this point, the air is saturated with moisture, causing water vapor to condense into liquid droplets. Dew point temperature is the temperature at which the air becomes fully saturated with moisture. That's when the relative humidity reaches 100%. At this point, the air can no longer hold all the water vapor it contains, and condensation occurs, forming dew, fog, or even frost if the temperature is below freezing. Uninsulated air conditioning duct in a warm attic. In uninsulated or poorly insulated sheet metal ducts, if the air temperature inside the ducts is lower than the dew point of the surrounding air, condensation can form on the outside. This can lead to water damage, mold growth, and reduced air quality. Proper insulation helps prevent this by keeping duct surface temperatures above the dew point. Cooling coils and condensation. As warm, humid air passes over these cooling coils, the air is cooled to the dew point, causing moisture to condense into liquid form. The water droplets are collected in a drain pan to prevent excess moisture from entering the airflow. This process is essential for dehumidifying air in HVAC systems, improving comfort and indoor air quality. Psychrometric chart showing temperature and humidity versus dew point. On a psychrometric chart, the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are key variables. These values help us understand how much moisture the air contains and how it affects heating, cooling, and dehumidification. As we see here in this psychrometric chart, the dew point is directly related to both temperature and humidity. The dry bulb temperature runs vertical up from the bottom, while the wet bulb temperature runs diagonally. When the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are the same, the air is completely saturated, and they meet at the dew point line on the chart. This is also the 100% relative humidity line. When the air's dry bulb temperature decreases, the relative humidity increases. If the dry bulb keeps dropping lower and lower, eventually it will hit the dew point temperature. When the air reaches the dew point temperature, the relative humidity is 100%. At this point, the air is fully saturated with moisture and can no longer hold any more water vapor, which is why condensation occurs. Keep in mind, the closer the air temperature is to the dew point temperature, the higher the relative humidity will be. Human comfort depends not only on the air temperature but also on humidity. The relationship between dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures helps HVAC engineers create environments where we feel comfortable by balancing temperature and moisture. Swamp coolers. Evaporative cooling systems, such as swamp coolers, rely on the difference between dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures to cool the air. The larger the difference, the more efficiently these systems work. Avoiding dew point in chilled beam applications. In chilled beam applications, it's crucial to prevent reaching the dew point temperature and creating condensation. Chilled beams don't have condensate drains, so it's important moisture doesn't occur on the face of the chilled beam. By controlling humidity and maintaining the surface temperature of the chilled beam above the room's dew point, we avoid condensation. This ensures efficient cooling without the risk of moisture forming and dripping into the space below. How human comfort is affected by high and low humidity levels. Humidity plays a significant role in how comfortable we feel in various environments. It affects the body's ability to regulate temperature through sweating and evaporation. Let's explore the effects of high humidity and low humidity on human comfort, along with visual examples and narration ideas. When the air is humid, sweat evaporates slowly. This makes it difficult for the body to cool down, leaving us feeling hot, sticky, and uncomfortable, even if the temperature isn't very high. In humid environments, air conditioning systems must work harder to remove moisture from the air. High humidity puts a strain on cooling systems, making it harder to achieve a comfortable indoor environment. Low humidity can make the air feel dry, which can cause discomfort like dry skin, 
irritated eyes, and respiratory issues. In extremely dry conditions, moisture is rapidly pulled from the skin, making it harder for the body to maintain optimal hydration levels. When humidity is too low, the air feels dry and uncomfortable. This can lead to dry skin, irritated eyes, and respiratory discomfort, especially in air-conditioned or heated environments. In extremely low humidity environments, such as deserts, the lack of moisture in the air can quickly dry out skin and other exposed surfaces. This rapid moisture loss can make conditions feel harsh, even in relatively cool temperatures. In dry indoor environments, adding moisture to the air using a humidifier can help balance humidity levels, improving comfort by reducing dryness and preventing irritation. In cold weather, low humidity can make the air feel even colder than it is, pulling moisture from the skin and leading to a sensation of chill that's more intense than the actual temperature. Condensation on a glass. Imagine a cold glass of water on a hot day. The air around the glass cools down, reaching its dew point, and condensation forms on the outside. This is the same process that happens in the atmosphere when dew forms. Fog in a valley early in the morning. When the temperature of the air falls to the dew point, we can see fog forming. Fog consists of tiny water droplets that appear when the air becomes fully saturated with moisture. This often happens overnight in valleys and low-lying areas. Comparing humid versus dry conditions. On a humid day, the dew point is higher and the air feels heavy and sticky. But on a dry day with a low dew point, the air feels much more comfortable. The dew point gives us an important clue about how we perceive the air around us. Cloud forming as air reaches dew point. Clouds form when warm air rises, cools, and reaches the dew point. At this moment, the air becomes saturated, and water vapor condenses into tiny droplets, forming the clouds we see in the sky. Saturated versus unsaturated air. When air contains less moisture, it's unsaturated. But as the temperature falls to the dew point, the air becomes fully saturated. At this point, the air can no longer hold its moisture, and condensation begins to form. Evaporation versus condensation. During the day, heat causes water to evaporate into the air. But at night, when temperatures drop, the air reaches the dew point, and water vapor condenses back into liquid form. This is the natural cycle of evaporation and condensation. Frost forming on a window pane. When temperatures drop below the dew point and freezing point, frost forms instead of dew. This occurs when the water vapor in the air directly transitions into ice, covering surfaces like windows in a thin layer of frost. Key points to remember. Higher dew point means more moisture in the air, making it feel humid. Lower dew point means the air is dry and feels more comfortable. When air temperature cools to the dew point, water vapor begins to condense into liquid. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our HVAC and plumbing estimating spreadsheets to streamline your construction bidding process. Check out our HVAC, electrical, and plumbing construction forms to help you run your business and explore our online courses for in-depth training. You'll find everything you need to level up your skills and efficiency. Links are in the description below. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.